English in the Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. Now this week I'm recording on the move, so I'm using lavalier and uh, a portable recorder from Zoom. So this week, what's been happening? Well, this month really, what's been happening? Well, to tell you the truth, we've had I've had a, a little bit of hassle with my shoulder. It's getting better, but it's one of those things where Every little time you try and exercise it, it seems to go back to the original position and, uh, you know, lots of pain. But I'm still going to be going training and hopefully that will exercise it enough to get it stronger quicker. And also on YouTube, I've been having a lot of trolls lately. People with accounts that don't have their real names, don't have any videos. They're just set up to abuse people. So... If that is, if you are one of them, I'm just blocking you, so there's no point. Ah, where do we go from here? Well, the one thing I am doing is working on lesson plans. Now, lesson plans are not just the plan you make to teach a lesson. They're the way you plan the martial arts training for your students to give them everything they need. Not just a bit of training, not just this and that. So I've been working on lesson plans so that I can introduce training concepts that allow you to become better much quicker. I'm also working on something um, that will help for distance learning. I know it's not the same as being with or coming to a club, but if you have a partner or some friends and you take it seriously enough, you can learn and you can actually go forward quite a bit and then maybe once every three months you come to the club or if you're abroad you can't obviously um other things can be done but that's one of the things i'm seriously thinking about um well i'm actually in uh working on them at the moment so distance learning and being able to uh sort out training regimes that allow you to get better quicker yeah, I know, it sounds like mad science, but it does work. You, know, you just have to know what you're doing. I mean, you can read a book on it and learn that kind of stuff. Really, you don't have to be taught that. You just have to make sure you're serious enough and you're taking the information properly. And I was taught it, so I'm lucky. One-on-one training is the way to go, if you can. Now, what else? So, my first training session is back to the club this Sunday. We're taking lots of stuff down, more gloves, weapons, etc. So, hopefully that will stock up the stuff we've lost and broke over the last few months. And we're going to be concentrating on pole arms and uh, short arms, really. So, we're going to be concentrating on close-range bare fist fighting, long-range weapon fighting for a while. So we're going to be using pole arms such as the quarter staff, the bill hook, the pitchfork, you know, that kind of um, pole arm, the, the peasantry, the peasantry pole arms. And we're also going to be concentrating on lots of fist, elbow, head butting and low kicking, purring. We're going to be making sure that we use um, the original purring technique using the front of the shoe into the knee, just below the knee, the shin, the junction where the calf meets the shin, the ankles, the actual calf, the knee. I've already said the knee. That's with the point of the toe, also with the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot and the sole of the foot. So purring at its most advanced and um, allowing you to knit that with takedowns, um, elbow smashes, head butting, fist work, you know, hooks, uppercuts, hammers, you know, pivot blows, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be moving on. We're going to be getting quite advanced now. All the gradings have happened. 
we have three new masters or maesters, three new provosts, and we really need to up the training. I mean, not the intensity so much because it was always intense, but the actual learning uh, by this by our students and teaching them how to teach as well because that's not a natural thing. So we've got to, you've really, really got to think about these things. Being a professional in your in your chosen field is hard work, especially when you don't get paid for it, and especially when you always have so many people against you. Because martial arts is like that; everybody knows best, everybody's art is the best. But it's it's not about the art; it's about how you train and the intensity you train at, and how realistic your training is, or how sportified your training is depending on what field of martial arts you want to go in. You know, there should be more togetherness rather than, rather than I don't know, just sniping and trolling. So we really need to, to work on that. Lucky enough, our club has a hardcore of students. Uh, they all train properly. They all train significantly hard. So the future is looking quite bright for us in certain ways. I mean, I haven't been able to get to training as much as I'd like to, but um, I will be teaching the class every Sunday from now on, so if anybody wants to come down, um, that would be good. Um, I'll be releasing more news on the distance learning thing I'm working on. Now, the distance learning thing won't be uh, our English classical martial arts because that's Terry... Terry's Terry Brown's domain, and he will be doing that himself. So you will be getting distance learning things uh, to do with the classical weapons, the back sword, quarter staff, etc. My um, distance learning will be um, on self defence, using the English martial arts pugilism system, pugilistic system for self defence, and that's how I'm going to start. Um, hopefully it'll be well received. If not, it's it'll be there forever. Needs it, and um, we really, really do need uh, some. We'll say European martial arts that are effective out there, rather than the sporting side all the time. I mean, the sporting side is great. Gives you fitness. Gives you technique. It gives you loads and loads of things that playing a normal sport couldn't give you. But it isn't real life, and it's not as close to real life as you're ever going to get. In fact, it's about as far away from real life as you're ever going to get. But it's still good. You know, I've come round. I used to really not like the sporting side, but, you know, I'm, I'm big enough to admit that, you know, it's a good thing. But what, what I'm going to be showing in the learning distance, or the distance learning uh, stuff I'm going to do is how to do it. I don't know, fight on the cobbles, blood and snot rolling around on the ground, people trying to bite you. You know that kind of stuff. You, you know the proper stuff that uh, you may well need one day. Um, so there's the two extremes of the martial arts, and we've got to we've got to look at them both with equal respect. Um, don't just think people who teach martial arts as they were first intended to be taught as fighting arts as anything other than absolutely authentic and traditional because that's exactly what they are and uh, that's that's where that's where we're going at the moment so thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast i know it wasn't very long and it was a bit of a i don't know rant or waffle waffling on a bit But thank you anyway, and if you enjoyed this episode, tune in for the next episode. It will be a good one. Listen to us, because we listen to you.